Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how you can build REST APIs using Python and Flask. The video will specifically focus on two different approaches or two different options rather on how you can build these REST APIs. Uh, again, both will be using Flask but the first option will be using vanilla Flask um, and in the second option we'll be using one of the Flask extensions called Flask RESTful uh, to build these APIs. So that's the scope of this video. Um, so again, in, in context, uh, if you're not familiar with Flask, uh, it's uh, what's referred to as a micro framework to build web applications. Now, the idea of a micro framework is uh, that it provides a very basic uh, set of frameworks to help you build uh, web applications as opposed to a very bloated or a heavy framework. Um, now the idea in general is that because it's a micro framework it comes with a um, very simple set of components so that makes uh, developing, learning and uh, hopefully extending it uh, with various um, other extensions quite simple. Uh, so the key focus around using Flask is around uh, elegance and simplicity and not be worried about uh, learning a very heavy framework or not necessarily leveraging the framework. And uh, Flask comes with uh, several uh, extensions. Uh, one of the extensions we'll be taking a look at today. So first off, let's, uh, let's dive in and let's create uh, a REST API uh, using uh, Flask. Uh, so the first option again is uh, we'll be using the vanilla um, Flask um, uh, module and uh, to get started um, you'll need to do a pip install of Flask uh, which I've already done and for the second option you'll need to do a pip install of Flask RESTful. So let's dive in. Alright, so um, what I've done in advance is I've uh, created um, a Conda environment uh, which I've uh, pre-installed all of these packages. Uh, feel free to use Conda to use virtualenv or if, uh, if you're not particular you can just um, run pip uh, install uh, directly. Uh, so again I've um, already uh, run these commands in the interest of time. Uh, so let's kick off with the first example. So um, here's a very basic um, application. This is a hello world uh, Flask application. So uh, if you're interested in getting the code, I've just borrowed it from uh, the Flask uh, homepage and um, slightly modified it. So again, we'll start off with a very basic uh, hello world example uh, of a web application. It's still not a REST API yet, but we'll work our way uh, as we go along. Uh, all right, so that's uh, that's the plan. So um, here's a basic example and to run the Flask application uh, again there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can actually run oops, uh, Flask. If you just type in Flask uh, you'll notice that it tells you that uh, you need to uh, export these uh, values here before you can run Flask run. That's option number one or you can just run Python and the name of the application. Flask uh, basic one. So if I run that, um, you'll notice that uh, it uh, one of the benefits of working uh, with Flask is that it gives you that built-in debugging and uh, web server for development. Uh, so that's really handy. So what we can do now is uh, we can do a quick curl. So let me copy that. Curl and paste that there and uh, sure enough it gives us a hello world. Uh, obviously um, uh, the thing to keep in mind is uh, this um, given that it's just vanilla flask the default is uh, meant for building web applications so it's basically trying to help return um, HTTP content so if we do it in verbose mode you'll notice that the content type that it's uh, returning is of uh, type uh, HTML it's uh, it's not uh, what you'd expect like a JSON format uh, that one would expect from a REST API so let's uh, let's change that uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to um, uh, return it as uh, JSON so we are going to also import JSON Nify. Forgot the spelling correct. JSONify. Yep. Let's import JSONify and let's convert this. And let's just call this uh, say about and 
let's convert that to a JSON and uh, you'll notice uh, here um, because we are running in debug mode anytime I save it uh, the file it'll automatically detect the change and uh, load that change so let's run it this time around if we do it in verbose mode uh, sure enough it's uh, now converted in into a JSON data and it's automatically converted the content type to uh, application JSON that's uh, what we would expect um, so just to make it more readable. I'll get rid of the verbose and here you go. So that's a quick example of how we could uh, take a, a look at Flask and in a, just a couple of minutes we can convert that into a RESTful API. So the magic behind it if you're not really familiar with uh, Flask is uh, this idea of uh, routes. Um, basically by adding this routes uh, decorator on top of a function it immediately converts that into a URI endpoint um, and obviously we can have several different routes and that's what we'll take a look at in the next Next example, but as you can already see, within uh, just a couple of uh, uh, short minutes, we can actually create a RESTful API uh, using Flask. Uh, so again, that's uh, kind of like the magic of Flask um, being a micro framework. Really quick uh, for us to get started and uh, quickly churn out solutions. So uh, before we move on to using Flask RESTful, let's uh, elaborate on this example uh, just a bit. Um, so uh, here uh, you can see that we only have one route. Uh, what if uh, we wanted uh, more routes? And in some cases, uh, we want to provide parameters as inputs uh, uh, to that URI. Um, and uh, what about other verbs like in this particular case it was uh, a get request what about other uh, HTTP verbs uh, like post for example so that's where we have our next uh, example and I've uh, typed this in advance uh, to save time on the video uh, feel free to pause the video and look at the code because um, uh, I might be going through it fairly quickly all right, so uh, this is, uh, I won't call it an advanced example, but a bit more in, in the form of detail. So let's, uh, let's stop this application and let's run the second one, basic uh, app. So that's uh, this uh, code that you're looking at here and I'll explain the code in just a bit. Um, so we have now run that. Um, so here uh, it's the same uh, basic Flask uh, framework as before. We have just added a, a few additional bits of code here. So as an example, this shows you how you can uh, create routes and endpoints uh, which take in uh, inputs which we can process that. So as a simple example, so let's uh, look at curl and say multi and if we provide a value like 10 for example um, it's uh, this is a overly simple example um, but uh, just to give you an idea of how you can uh, create endpoints that accepts um, uh, values that you need to further process um, so in this example we have decorated it uh, with a route and uh, this is specifically uh, get if you did not specify the methods the default will be get and uh, here's another example how we can um, uh, pass in data in the form of a post. Uh, so uh, you can see here that um, uh, we decorate it uh, with the route and specify the methods as having uh, both get the get verb and the post. And uh, within the content um, of the function, we are able to distinguish uh, whether it's a post or a get uh, through the request dot method. And uh, if it's a post, uh, I'm not doing anything fancy here. Uh, obviously, uh, in a real world example, uh, you'd uh, process the data, validate the data, maybe persist that in some backend um, and uh, return some uh, results. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, for this demo, it's uh, really simple. Uh, all I'm trying to do is um, uh, do um, a, a very basic demonstration of how you can extract the content of the post. Uh, so here um, you'll see in the code that I'm just extracting the content from the request and then um, basically sending it back in the response. Uh, so here's an example of how um, I'm, I'm uh, doing a very basic post um, here. So as you can see, it's, um, it's basically extracting whatever you have sent in the message body and sending it back. So nothing fancy. The one thing I just wanted to quickly uh, highlight is uh, things like response codes. Uh, you'll notice uh, that the default uh, for any get is uh, 200, but in some cases uh, you might want to return a different um, response code. So for example, uh, typical in case of post is uh, you have created something, uh, added a new record, and you will want to return a different 
status HTTP response code like 201. So this is a simple example of how uh, you can specify a response code um, in, uh, along with uh, your GET and POST requests. Um, so that uh, sums it up for the first option. So again, just a quick recap. So far, we have taken a look at the first option, which is how you can uh, build a REST API using vanilla Flask. And already you can see as we progress through the example from a basic example to a slightly more uh, advanced one, you can see that uh, it quickly starts maybe to, uh, starts getting a little overwhelming in terms of uh, the code and the code maintainability. And at once you're working with a larger project, chances are um, this approach uh, that's made available in the uh, the basic Flask framework is, uh, is not uh, that efficient in terms of code, code maintainability, uh, particularly when you're working with uh, slightly uh, larger medium to large projects. In which case, uh, that's when we resort to uh, using one of the extensions that you have in uh, Flask, which is called Flask RESTful. So again, you can find a lot more details uh, around Flask RESTful uh, in, on the website. And as the website uh, suggests, um, the idea of uh, Flask RESTful is really around uh, incorporating some of the best practices um, that uh, you have in the industry specifically for building uh, REST API. So again, it's an extension on top of Flask. And we'll take a look at how it works uh, right now. So let me stop this uh, uh, debugging application. and. Clear that out and let's take a look at the code. Um, so again, if you remember, this was the example that we last looked at, um, which is using the vanilla flask. And uh, to take a look at uh, how this would um, change if we were to use flask restful, uh, this is basically what it looks like. So first off, you'll notice that we have to uh, import Flask RESTful. And a key module within that is uh, the resource. And that's the main building block, if you will, of uh, Flask RESTful. And uh, it, um, it allows for our code to be much more segregated with clearer separation of concern and um, best practices included. Um, so again, just trying to compare and contrast, um, uh, you'll notice in addition to creating an application, uh, we now now have uh, another API uh, that is built on top of the app and it's against this API uh, that we then add uh, these resources. Uh, so you can see here that it's much cleaner. We don't have to keep decorating all our functions um, with uh, the different routes. Um, we add these uh, resources. And these are resources, uh, these classes, which are inherited from the resource uh, class. And here we can see a much cleaner uh, separation of concern. Um, so as an example, uh, if we look at uh, these uh, hello world, you'll notice that uh, we have uh, bound that to the root. And within that, uh, we have uh, functions uh, which map to the underlying HTTP verb, like if it's a get or if it's a post. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, in this example, we are just doing get and post. But if you had put delete, etc., you would uh, just uh, create uh, the method name uh, with uh, the verb, like a delete or a put, and it'll automatically uh, map that to the HTTP request. So let's take a look at this in action. Uh, again, it's uh, the output uh, is uh, identical to the previous example. So let's run. Oops, uh, restful. All right. So um, let's start off with the basic example again. So um, if we do a quick curl, yep, uh, as expected, uh, multi and uh, say 22. All right, so uh, same as before. And then finally, uh, if we were to uh, do a post, uh, uh, again, uh, the outputs should be identical, uh, nothing uh, really new. Um, but since we spent a lot of time talking about the code uh, from previous exam examples, I'm not going through uh, in a lot of detail. Again, just pause the video and uh, scan through the code um, if, uh, if you're not sh uh, very clear about the code structure. Uh, in summary, what we are seeing is that uh, when we are using uh, uh, an extension like Flask RESTful, it, uh, it 
uh, simplifies uh, code and code maintainability and um, again incorporates a lot of the industry best practices around building RESTful APIs. Uh, we've just scratched the surface around what we can do with Flask and Flask RESTful. Obviously uh, this video haven't covered uh, a lot of other details like how do we do things like exception handling um, and uh, doing things like authentication and uh, various other components that are typically required of a, of a RESTful API but uh, uh, hopefully this is a, um, a, a good starting point to help you on your journey to build uh, RESTful APIs and um, in, in the future I might add uh, more advanced videos. Uh, do let me know your thoughts and comments. Thanks for watching.